Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and lately I have been printing with a type of filament that I have not used before. It's called PEBA or PEBA if you want to put all the letters together. And this is an alternative to TPU. And I was sent some filament to try out by a company called Simbatron because they are getting ready to sell their PEBA filament via Kickstarter. So if you are interested in that after you see this video and check out some of the things that I've printed with it, go ahead and check out the link in the descriptions. So we'll take you over there so that you can see what they have on offer. And I know Know that Kickstarter sometimes can be a little bit iffy, but this is a real product. They have shipped it. I have plenty of rolls to choose from of this PEBA filament, so it is the real deal. Now, let's go back for a minute and talk about the alternative to TPU, what makes them similar. Well, as you know, TPU has different shore hardnesses, but the main thing when you think about TPU is that it's flexible, it can be stretchy, it can be squishy. And because of that, you have to take special considerations when you print it. For example, it can be very hygroscopic, so it's best to draw Dry it in the filament dryer and print TPU while it's dry. And you have to consider how you're going to do it. You need a direct drive extruder, preferably something that will let you feed the filament in maybe through the top so that you can make sure that you continue to get some good extrusion. And the same thing applies with the PEBA filament. However, I decided to walk a little bit on the wild side and I have used the FlashForge 85X to print all of the PEBA things I'm going to show you today through the IFS. I know I do a lot of videos about this printer, so if you're curious on whether or not this can handle it, spoiler alert, it totally, totally can. So a couple other things that Simbatron says makes their PEBA filament better than TPU is the high tensile strength that it has and you can print it faster than TPU. Now that doesn't mean that is going to be printing as fast as like a high speed PLA, but you should be able to set your volumetric flow to be a little bit higher than you would a normal TPU. Now, when I did my prints, I set my volumetric flow to be five millimeters cubed per second, but you can get it all the way up to 7.2 millimeter cubes per second when you use the PEBA filament. All the different specs and stats and stuff, I mean, that's all good on paper, but what I am most interested in and what I imagine most people are interested in when you buy this filament, especially if you're not trying to do anything too scientific with it, is just to know how in the world does it perform and how the final results turn out. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Now here is the filament and the spools that it comes on. So uh, they sent me a variety of different colors with different shore hardnesses as well. So this is PEBA 90A, and they also have a PBBA 80. 5A. Now the 85A of course is going to be a lot looser than the 95A. It is going to be softer and uh, well trickier to print under normal circumstances. So I've got these three here and the first thing that I wanted to print out was well something for your feet. So I loaded up some orange on the 85X going through the IFS. And then we ended up with this here flip flop. Now this is just the part that goes on the bottom of your feet, but as you can see, it's got these holes in it where you can attach like a uh, the strap that goes to the flip flops, which I thought would be easier to find. Like on Amazon is buy some straps and you can plug these in and maybe glue them in if you need to. They'd be kind of difficult to find. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open for it, but I did manage to print this on the AD5X and uh, I decided to use a uh, gyroid infill and that is pretty much what you're seeing in this print and check it out. It is very flexible. I'm trying not to let it go without paying attention because if I do, this is just going to fly and flip way over there. This is pretty darn good. It's not easily rippable. 
I'm sure if you put enough strength into it, you could start tearing it. But who who does that? You know, really on purpose. But this printed perfectly fine on the very first try on this printer. I was a little bit um, concerned about whether or not it could handle a 90A short hardness filament, but it handled it like a champ printed it out low and slow 60 degree bed temperature had my flow rate set to five and everything else was just easy going and i managed to pull this off now if i can just take off my shoe and just kind of step on this the way that is built with the infill and everything it's not squishy so it's not going down to the ground it is nice and it's firm but it has a good flexibility to it as well and i like that about this it doesn't hurt my feet but you know you can change the infill to kind of give it the type of look that you want but at the end of the day how well it printed it printed really really good nice and easy so the second thing I wanted to print was something that was squishier. So I continued to use the 90A filament, but this time I chose a white filament instead of the orange. And I saw that there's this model that they have for a little miniature pillow. Now, the file was larger than this. I shrank it down so that it could fit the bed more easily. And check this out. This is super duper squishy. I think I might have used like a concentric uh, infill pattern on this, but this is supposed to be something that, you know, it's, it's like a pillow. You sit back, you put your head on it, put it on your seat, something like that. Maybe like put it down here on your back if you really need to. And even though it is nice and squishy, it is still the 90 a shore hardness PEBA filament. So it's not as squishy as it could be. But with this printed on the 85X, again, in one go, in one try, while being dried in the filament dryer, while it was printing, it had absolutely no problems. And, got to mention this, it was through a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, not a 0.6 and not a 0.8. I don't even have those types of nozzles for this printer. And it still printed it remarkably well with no jams, no clogs, no mishaps, nothing like that. Really surprised and happy that that was the fact. Now, with this filament and its high impact resistance and the fact that in the past people were printing like all these uh, basketballs and stuff, I wanted to give that a go. But I wanted to start small, so I used again the 90A PEBA to print out this tennis ball. All right, again, 85X, got it done all in one go, no problems. And it did have supports. I tore the supports off. You still see a little bit of um, a little bit of leftover support material on the bottom so that would need to be cleaned up but it is nice and it's hard it's it's not something that you can squeeze but the bounciness <laughs> check that out now that's something that you really can't do with tpu to get this kind of bounce and be able to do it so consistently like this I mean, this has the bounce of like a regular tennis ball. I wish I had one to compare it to, but I'm not even trying to do this very hard. And you can just see how high it's coming up. And I just, I can just keep on doing this. And there's absolutely no sign of it wearing down or getting ready to break or crushed or nothing. This is like, it's a freaking 3D printed tennis ball it works phenomenally well. I love this thing. But I wanted to push things a little bit further with some 85A PEBA. Now, ideally, what I would have done was try to run that through the top and, you know, just disconnect the IFS and stick it straight down into the print head, you know, because this, this 85A, you know, it's, it's a lot looser. It's very loosey-goosey. 
but I ran it through the IFS anyway, and I decided to print one of the many objects that um, are available for the new Borderlands 4 video game over on Printables. So I found this like chin mask thing, and this was done with the 85A, and it printed on the very first try. And just look how freaking flippity floppity this thing is. Now it's supposed to kind of go like this. It doesn't really work with me because with the beard and everything, but you can kind of see what it's going for here. So at least it does fit. And this also needed supports. Um, so when I was taking off the support material, which was also the, um, also the PEBA, didn't use any type of special support material, didn't use PLA to do the supports. I just let it go in all in one filament. Just like TPU, it was a little bit harder to remove those supports than it would have been if it were another material that didn't bond so well to it. So at the very bottom of this mask, you can kind of see the remnants of the supports when I tore them off and it just kind of got everything looking kind of gnarly at the bottom. If we look on the inside of the mask as well. We see that we have some raised areas here. A filament didn't come out as smooth as something like the shoe or the tens ball or something like that. But then again, it is 85A TPU and it was being pushed through this IFS. So all things considered, the fact that it managed to complete and it doesn't look horrible, you know, um, I was still impressed that it was able to do that. But, you know, just based off this mask, the way you feel it, it feels like it feels like rubber. It truly feels like rubber. I mean, you can just bend this thing and it's just. It's kind of crazy knowing that that came out of the 3D printer. So that's that's that there. One more thing I wanted to show you, something that I really, really wanted to try. And I alluded to it a little bit ago. I wanted to print a basketball. So I did. 90A PEBA, a little miniature basketball. It fit here on the 85X. There were different sizes available, but I chose this size because it fit the bed. And this basketball took about two days to print. Two days straight in the filament dryer being fed through this IFS on this printer. So again, really amazed <laughs> that it was able to do that. And especially with something like this basketball here, because, you know, it has all of these little honeycomb pattern holes going all through it. And I didn't hit it with a heat gun. I didn't try to get rid of like all the stringing or whatever. It came out very clean um, and the supports were right there on the bottom. And I thought that that was going to be a huge problem. But with the 90A supports, they tend to come off mostly all in one piece. So I was able to kind of just get under one side and gradually work my way around, pulling it up bit by bit until it all came off. Now at the bottom of it, you still see that there is like that first layer or so of support material that's still there that um, I really just want to rip off because like the basketball is still underneath there. But this part right here is pretty well attached. So I will have to go back there with the tool and, you know, just kind of gradually peel that off. But it did not affect the bounciness of this ball. So check it out. I'm just there bouncing this ball around in my living room. And wow, who knew that something as simple as a 3D printed basketball could bring so much joy. I can't get as crazy back here because this is going to just knock over everything. But just kind of hearing it bounce in the sound that it has it doesn't have the same sound as like a regular basketball it's a little bit lighter it's a little bit um more pingy if you will it doesn't have that conk conk it's more of a tink tink but it operates just like a regular basketball does as far as the bounciness of it goes and it's not breaking apart this is so cool and just like the tennis ball you can squeeze it in 
you know, just a little bit, just a little bit. But it's like a basketball that's filled with air, even though there's no air in it. It's complete. There's nothing on the inside. But just the way that it's printed has made it so hard and it's made it just so accurate that you can. I wish I had a basketball hoop right here, you know, and just. Woo. But yeah, this is my favorite thing that I printed with this uh, Simbatron PEBA filament, and it just worked out so, so good. So as far as being an alternative to TPU, man, if I can get this kind of stuff out of it, I would totally be using this instead of just regular TPU, because why not? I mean, maybe you have some more specific applications that regular TPU would be better for you for whatever specific use case it is. But for someone like me who just likes to print this random stuff and then just gawk about how cool it was that I was able to do that, this stuff is just like really good because I can't see a downside for me personally in using this over TPU. It wasn't difficult to print and I can do things with this that I can't do with regular TPU like these bouncing balls. And I know that I still have the elasticity. I know that I still got some strength. And of course, it's going to depend on your settings and what you're trying to do. But I really don't see the downsides to this. So I'm very happy with this filament and I'm going to continue to use it when I need to print something that would be normally done with TPU, but I'm not going to do it with TPU. I'm going to do it with the PEBA filament. So once again, if you are interested in checking this out, I don't know what the price is going to be or what kind of special offers might be there on Kickstarter for when this launches. But just go ahead and just check the link in the description to take you over to Kickstarter where you will be able to buy this filament. And like I said, it is totally legit. They do have it. Here's the box that it came in. And then it also comes wrapped inside of like a uh, aluminum looking plastic wrap. They say that it's been dried before it left the factory. So if you use it within three days of opening it, then you shouldn't have to dry it. But I went ahead and dried it anyway, just to err on the side of caution so that I can get some, you know, pretty decent print quality. But yeah, it's it's here. It's there. It is compatible with pretty much any of your direct drive extruder FDM 3D printers. And they even have some Bamboo Lab profiles. If those are the printers that you're going to be using just to make things a little bit easier for you. But for me, I use a combination of Orca Slicer as well as Orca Flash Forge with a PEBA um, preset that I created from a generic 85A profile. And I just changed a couple of those attributes according to what Simbatron said was best and everything worked out. So it didn't take rocket science and I still got great results and I really don't want to let this basketball go. This is so cool. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you found this useful in any way, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. Let me know what you think about PEBA filament, if you tried it and what you think of it. So until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.